guys, what's going on? Kyle right here, Low Cash Classics. And today I wanted to talk to you about what type of tools you'll need to get into the automotive upholstery industry. Now, keep in mind, I've been doing this for a little over a year and a half now. Been doing it full time as my professional career for about four months. Um, so I'm gonna give you the bare bones tools, what you have to have to get jobs done. Um, I've learned all of this on my own. Uh, so hopefully I'll be able to help some people out with this. We're going to go through it in kind of a few different steps. I'll tell you what the tools are, what they're used for, and around how much you can buy them for. Um, first thing that you're obviously going to need is a sewing machine. Um, this is kind of up to the person what you like. Um, you can find these old consoles. You can find jukies and stuff like that on Facebook all the time, um, ranging in price from... $200 up to $1,500 to $2,000. The machines are really something you'll want to do some research on. Uh, join some Facebook groups or something. Ask anybody you know who might be in the industry. Uh, but this is the absolute first thing you have to have to do anything in the automotive upholstery industry. Um, it does have to be a walking foot machine. Um, and what I'll do is I'll show you a walking foot. Basically, it's got feed dogs here and it's got the foot up here. And as you rotate it through, both of those work together to push your material through. Um, so you definitely want to have a heavy duty walking foot machine in order to do automotive upholstery because it's just going to help with your thicker materials. Along with that sewing machine, you're going to want to find a couple different sets of feet. So like here, I've got a uh, quarter inch uh, top stitch uh, foot. This isn't necessary really. You can do this with a regular foot. This is just something nice to have. Um, this is one thing you will wanna get. These are sets of uh, piping feet. These are for doing welting, anything like that. And I originally, when I started, tried to do welting with a regular foot and it was almost impossible. Um, I talked to a couple guys in the industry and they're like, get you a set of walking foot, of, uh, piping feet and it's going to be a million times better so you'll definitely want to cut a couple different sets of feet really welting feet you've got to have um, and a standard foot is fine you can get by with that um, the next thing you're going to need is measuring tools so you definitely want a ruler i've got this vintage dodge dealership ruler that i absolutely love i use this on every single project i do um, yard sticks I've got like three or four yardsticks floating around here. Um, they're super cheap, guys. You can get these. I think they're a dollar or two dollars from Albright Supply. You can pick them up at Walmart. You can get metal ones, but you've got to have a yardstick for a nice straight edge and measuring stuff. Um, you want to get one of these. It's like a dressmaker's tape. Um, this one is a really long one. It's, let's see, this one's 120 inches. Um, I think I got this at Hobby Lobby for like five bucks, but it comes in handy. Um, this one you don't necessarily have to have, but I like it for uh, making my turns. This is a, a bendable ruler and it kind of keeps its shape. So it really helps whenever you're doing like certain size turns or anything like that. This here really helps out. I got this on Amazon. I think it was 15 bucks. Um, the other thing you're gonna need is you're gonna want marking utensils. Um, this is something whenever I first started out, I went to Hobby Lobby and I bought these little fabric marker pins. I think they're a dollar fifty, something like that. Um, but this is blue ink and it will not mark on vinyl. If you use this to write on vinyl, it comes right off. Um, then I found out about these. Um, this is the Fisher Space Pin. Um, you can get these at Albright Supply for, I think, $6 a piece. They're a pressurized cartridge um, with silver ink. Uh, they write on just about any color vinyl you want to do. One thing I do always recommend is make a test mark and then try to wipe it off just to make sure the ink is going to come off of whatever material you're working on. Um, I haven't had any issues with it ever. I usually take a piece of foam dab some dishwashing liquid on it it all wipes right off if that doesn't take it off a lot of guys are saying use lighter fluid or gasoline stuff like that i know i've used wd-40 before and it's taken it right off as well uh you want to have sharpies now 
You don't want to just get black Sharpies because I use um, an ABS plastic for making door panels and headliners and stuff like that, and it's black. So if you only get black Sharpies, they don't show up, but you can get these silver Sharpies. In between black and silver, you can mark just about anything you need to mark. Do not use Sharpies to mark your material because it will bleed through, it will cause issues, you will not be able to get it off. Um, next thing you need is cutting tools. So you can get a nice pair of shears like this. Um, I think the, I got these online for $30, $35, something like that. Um, but I also like to get these. They're just a cheap pair from Walmart. Um, I think they were $14. I've got like three or four sets of these and they work just fine. Um, I use these for a little bit thicker material and I use these on just about anything else. So get a couple different pairs of these because guaranteed you're gonna sit them down, you're gonna misplace them, um, keep them sharp. Uh, you can take them to certain places. I know there's some quilting stores that you can drop off your shears and they'll sharpen them for you. Um, I bought just a little sharpening tool from Walmart. I think I paid like $4 for it and I just sharpen all my own shears. Um, so you definitely got to have that. Um, let's see. Here's one, a uh, seam ripper. Uh, when you're first starting out this tool, you're going to use it probably daily because you're going to be taking apart uh, old covers. You're going to be taking apart things you've messed up because I guarantee you in the beginning you're going to mess up a million times. So definitely get a good seam ripper, get two or three. Um, there is a cap to this. You always want to keep that on there. Otherwise, you're going to tear stuff up. Um, next thing you need, depending on what you're going to be doing, there's a couple tools that you may not need, but I'm going to go ahead and show them to you anyways. Um, if you're doing any sort of foam cutting, you want to get one of these. Um, it's just an electric turkey carver. You can pick them up at Walmart for 14, 15 bucks. Um, a lot of guys are going to Goodwill. You can find them used there for like a dollar or two. So that, and I mean, cutting foam with that is like one of the coolest things ever. It just slices right through it. So you want one of those. Um, next thing you'll need is you'll need a staple gun. Now, a lot of guys aren't using these kinds of staple guns, but this is what I started off with. I didn't have any problems until I tried to do a motorcycle seat that had a fiberglass bucket. Um, that was almost impossible to get through with this. And this even has the little thing here where you can adjust it and put more pressure on it and stuff like this. You can get this exact same staple gun at Walmart for 20 bucks maybe. Um, now, once I came across the fiberglass bucket that I couldn't get through with this, I did have to upgrade to a pneumatic staple gun. Um, I paid $115 for this at Menards and it's one of the best investments I've made. Haven't had any issues with it um, and it super fast compared to trying to use that hand staple gun every single time. Uh, another little stapler that I use is this little office stapler. And I use this whenever I'm making my patterns. Instead of using pins and stuff, because I don't like the way it sometimes leaves holes that you can't cover up, I like to take this, staple around the edge of my material, and it holds everything together while I'm sewing very nicely. And then afterwards, I just pull the staples out. Um, after talking about the pneumatic stapler, uh, there are a few specialty tools, air tools you're gonna need. Uh, number one is a paint gun. You're gonna use this for spraying your glue. I started out trying to use this uh, 3M adhesive on stuff and it just doesn't work. Um, any heat at all and everything comes completely unglued. Once I switched over to this and started using the Landau cement that you can spray through this, I haven't had any issues. You can pick these things up at Harbor Freight for 20 bucks, $25, something like that. You can get online and order one. Uh, you will want to put a pressure regulator on it so you can adjust your spray and stuff like that. Um, I've used this gun on every project I've done. You just leave your glue in it. It's sealed good enough. Your glue doesn't dry out. Um, every once in a while you want to clean the nozzle and stuff like that, but I never clean the pot or anything. So I'll get you a nice spray gun, like I said. Get them at Harbor Freight. They're cheap enough. If it messes up, toss it in the trash, go get a new one. Um, if you're gonna do any foam work, you'll want some tools for shaping that. Um, I use this little die grinder. It takes the stuff down super, super fast. Um, so it's great for getting your initial shape in there. Um, and then I use a DA sander with an 80 grit sandpaper just to kind of smooth everything out, 
finish out my shape the way I want it to. Um, and then I've got this, which is just a little sander that I use to put notches in my foam for where I can tuck my salvage in. So each one of these things, um, I got at Harbor Freight. They're all the central pneumatics. Uh, this was $25. This was, I think, 20 and the DA I think was 35 or 40 bucks, so nothing too outrageous there. Um, another thing you're gonna need for sure is a set of hog ring pliers. I'm sure there are way better sets than this out there. I got this at Tractor Supply. This isn't even an upholstery tool. This is one you actually use for hog rings on pigs and stuff. Um, I got this at Tractor Supply for $10. Uh, so get you some of those. You'll definitely have to have those. Once you get into the cars and trucks that are held on with hog ring pliers, you got to have these to put the hog rings back. Another thing you're going to need is door panel removal tools. Uh, you're going to need them once you start taking apart interiors. You can get this whole set at Harbor Freight for like 20 bucks. Um, and then there's a couple other specialty tools. Uh, this is for moving door panel clips. Uh, this is super nice. Um, it's for pulling Christmas tree clips. You put it behind the door panel, push that out, and it pops it out very nicely. Um, I put tape on mine just so I don't scratch any paint or anything like that. Um, you're going to want a heat gun. Uh, this is actually just an old heat gun that um, I found laying around the house. Um, but you're going to want it. It helps whenever you're putting your covers on. You can heat them up a little. It helps stretch the material a little bit more. Um, the other thing you're going to want is a steamer. Now, this is just a, like, household steamer you would use for clothes. Uh, most guys are using the big Jiffy steamers. They got the pot on the bottom, the long hose, stuff like that. Those are going for, like, $150, $250, $300 used. Um, you can get one of these at Walmart or on Amazon for like $30 and it works just the same. You gotta fill up the water a little more often, but honestly, I've used this and I haven't had any issues. Um, this will help you whenever you are putting on covers, you steam it, you can stretch the material, helps get wrinkles out, shrink stuff up a little bit. It just really helps with kind of getting your covers on the proper way. So that's another thing you'll definitely wanna check into. Um, that's all I got today, guys. Um, like I said, these are the bare basic tools you're going to need in order to get into the industry. Along with this, you know you're going to need your screwdrivers, your wrenches, your ratchets, stuff like that that you're going to need for disassembling interiors. But these are more of the specialized tools that you're going to need specifically for the upholstery work. Um, if you guys have any questions, drop a comment down below. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe so you guys can see all the cool stuff we got coming your way.